Welcome back. Last time we looked at Dr. John MacArthur's thoughts about science and we found that he has a fairly negative view of some science. Today I want to look at another author from this book, Coming to Grips with Genesis. Uh, Dr. Richard uh, Mayhew has an article here, or a chapter here rather, that has some statements about science that I think need to be looked at rather closely. Now, in evaluating this chapter is a little bit difficult for this reason. Dr. Mayhew is engaged here in a controversy with another scholar, Dr. Hugh Ross. Dr. Ross proposed that we should view nature as the 67th book of the Bible. And Dr. Mayhew doesn't like that idea at all and attacks that idea. And frankly, I'm not too interested in the, in the argument. I, I really don't want to get into this argument. I don't want to be a part of that. But what does interest me is the sort of arguments that Dr. Mayhew creates as he argues against Dr. Ross. And I'm especially interested in this because I have heard these arguments from people who have studied at the school where Dr. Mayhew teaches. And I think that there are some problems with these arguments. And therefore, I think that it's important to look at them rather closely. In effect, what Dr. Mayhew is saying is that theological theories are to be preferred to scientific theories because they are more reliable. They are more likely to be true. Now, how does he get there? Well, he starts with something that I think is fairly uncontroversial, namely that general revelation, which is to say the knowledge we have of God from nature, the, the world around us and from our own consciences, general revelation is inferior, certainly in quantity and perhaps also in clarity to a special revelation. Special revelation is the Bible. So from nature, we can learn some things about God. The heavens declare the glory of God. Paul says in uh, Romans chapter one that God has made known his being and his attributes to people everywhere through nature, through the things that have been created. There is knowledge that we can have of God, but it's limited. What we learn from special revelation, the Bible is much greater. We can learn from the Bible that God is triune. We can learn from the Bible that Jesus Christ is both man and God. We can learn from the Bible how to be saved. So the Bible is much more clear. It is much more complete, certainly, in what it teaches us about God than nature. So general revelation is inferior to special revelation in regard to what it teaches us about God. This is not controversial. But Dr. Mayhew seems to want to extrapolate from this principle and say that what nature teaches us about itself is also inferior to what scripture teaches us about nature, which is a very different thing from saying that what nature teaches us about God is inferior to what the scriptures teach us about God. He seems to want to say that the Bible is going to always be clearer. He doesn't necessarily say more complete in what it says about nature than what we can learn from nature itself. Is this true? Well, <laughs> Let's answer this way. Let's say you've got a really bad toothache and you've got a choice between two dentists. And one dentist um, is scientifically trained at one of the best dental schools in the world. This person is not a believer, but has been very well trained, understands all that modern dental science has found out about teeth and about gums and about materials for uh, amending teeth and, and when to know when you've got to do a root canal and, and administering anesthesia and all the rest of it. Scientifically trained. The other person um, is very proud of having not gone to medical school because after all, uh, dental school is simply a place where you learn these human theories about a fallen creation. No, this dentist is a biblical dentist. This dentist knows everything the Bible teaches us about dentistry and he's going to treat you according to biblical principles. Okay, which dentist do you choose? Well, if you choose the biblical dentist, don't look for me in the chair next to you because I'm not gonna be there. I'm gonna be with the other dentist. I want somebody who has investigated teeth from a scientific point of view, because I think that what nature teaches us about nature is much more complete and even more clear generally than what scripture teaches us about nature. Scripture teaches us that nature is from God. It belongs to God. Nature glorifies God. God is sovereign over nature. But how nature works, scripture doesn't teach us much about that. You can't learn from scripture anything about photosynthesis or about cell biology or the, the role of the frontal cortex in the brain. Uh, the Bible just does not teach on these things, but we can learn these things from nature. So you cannot properly extrapolate from the superiority of special revelation to general revelation in regard to the knowledge of God and say that in the same way, what the Bible says about nature is going to be clearer than what nature says about nature. 
Now, there are some sub-arguments in Dr. Mayhew's argument here. I think that we need to look at these also. One is this. In the Bible, we are promised that as we as Christians read Scripture, the Holy Spirit will illumine our minds. There's no promise that the Holy Spirit will illumine our minds when we're doing science. Therefore, clearly, biblical knowledge or our theological knowledge should be preferred to any scientific knowledge because the Holy Spirit's involved in giving us knowledge. Well, think about that for a minute. It's a very precious truth that the Holy Spirit is with us as we're reading Scripture. Uh, I pray whenever I read the Bible that God will open my eyes to, to see wonderful things in His law because I believe it's very possible for me to read the words and not understand the meaning. I believe it's the Holy Spirit who gives illumination to my heart, to my mind, to, be, to understand and to apply to myself what the Scripture says. But does the doctrine of the illumination of the Holy Spirit teach us that theologians will never make mistakes? Clearly not. Obviously, in the course of history, theologians have made many mistakes. And theologians disagree among themselves all the time. In any given case, at most, one person can be right or one position can be right. They can't all be right. Clearly, the Holy Spirit has not undertaken to ensure that the church never makes any errors. And think again of our old example from the 16th and 17th centuries, the Copernican Revolution. It's a case where the scriptures seemed to teach clearly that the earth stands still and the sun goes around the earth, but that was wrong. And it was science that showed us that. So clearly it's possible, despite the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and in our lives, it's very possible for us to make mistakes in our theology. And therefore we cannot take the position that if there's a conflict between theology and science, we're always going to prefer theology. We've got to listen to the science also. Another sub-argument that Dr. Mayhew makes has to do with the fall and the effects of the fall on our ability to know things. He says a couple of things here. At least I think he does. One thing he says, I think, is that the creation itself, because of the fall, is somehow more inaccessible to our efforts to understand it than Scripture is. Dr. Mayhew speaks of the creation as the cursed and corrupted creation. And he says that we must not put human interpretations of the cursed and corrupted revelation on an equal footing with God's blessed and inerrant revelation through Holy Scripture. Well, I agree. We never put our interpretations of nature on the same footing as Scripture. We compare not science with Scripture, we compare science with theology. And I think that uh, Dr. Mayhew obscures this very, very important distinction. But he seems to be saying here that the creation itself, being cursed and corrupted, is perhaps not accessible to our efforts to understand it. That is to say that in some way, because of the fall, even if you use your mind well and you try to investigate nature, you're still going to come up with wrong results because the creation has fallen. I don't believe there's any passage of Scripture that says this. I can't think of any portion of the scripture that teaches us that because of the fall, the creation is inaccessible to our minds. I don't see Solomon in his investigations of animals and plants and creeping things, throwing up his hands in despair and saying, I can't know it because of the fall. Even when you think about what Paul says in Romans chapter 1, verse 20, he says that the creation clearly demonstrates to us the existence of God and the attributes of God. He doesn't say that the creation, because it's fallen, is somehow incapable of giving testimony to God or that the creation cannot be understood because of the fall. This doctrine is simply not found in the Bible. The other thing that Dr. Mayhew is saying about the fall, though, is that our minds are affected. He mentions that uh, man has diminished intellectual capacity to think in the realm of general knowledge. Well, you know, I suspect that because of the fall, we have diminished intellectual capacity period. I suspect that we're all a lot dumber than we would be without the fall. The Bible doesn't teach that. It just seems to me a reasonable thing to, 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 to surmise based upon the fact that the fall affects every part of our being. But what the fall clearly does, and scripture clearly teaches this, is to cause human beings to want to suppress truths that are uncomfortable to us. Paul speaks of this again in Romans 1. He says that unconverted people see the grandeur of God, that is, that they recognize that God exists, that there are some things about God that they can't not know, but they don't want to know them. And so they suppress this knowledge in unrighteousness. And we can imagine this happening in the sciences. That is to say that there will be scientists or people who study science 
who will take scientific ideas and then use those as a kind of proof or kind of evidence that God doesn't exist or that we don't need to think about God. So yes, in this way, I think that the fall does affect our knowledge in the realm of general knowledge. But does the Bible ever teach that the impact of the fall is only in, in, in the realm of what, what Dr. Mayhew calls general knowledge, that is to say in the, the world of nature and not in the world of scripture? Clearly not. If you think about it, we tend to suppress the truth of scripture even more than we do the, the truth of nature. When Jesus Christ, who is the very special revelation of God, the most perfect revelation of God came into this world, we killed him. Fallen humanity does not want that truth. And when people read the Bible, they suppress what's in the Bible. If they're not converted, they're going to suppress it very, very powerfully. And even those of us who are Christians may have some tendency to suppress certain truths of the Bible. When's the last time you heard a really good sermon on the doctrine of hell? Most of us pastors really don't like to talk about that. And so we unconsciously suppress that truth. So I don't see anything in the Bible to suggest that because of the fall, our science is going to be more problematic than our theology. The fact is that both science and theology are problematic. We have difficulties understanding the world around us. We have difficulties understanding scripture. And because we have difficulties in both places and we clearly make mistakes in both places, I'm going back to my fundamental principle here. We need both. You cannot, I think, make a, an argument legitimately from the Bible that somehow theological knowledge is privileged and therefore that we should simply take whatever these scholars tell us is true based upon their reading of Genesis and not bother to see what the scientists are saying. I just don't, take, I don't think that's right. What's going on here, really, in this book? Here is the way I look at it. It seems to me that these scholars are, in a sense, digging a moat around their interpretation of Scripture. They're convinced that their interpretation of the Bible is right. The days of Genesis are 24-hour days, and therefore the week is a one, uh, just a regular week, and therefore the universe is young. They're convinced that this is correct. They also know, of course, that modern science mounts very powerful uh, challenges against that view. And it's as if they want to protect themselves from that. They want to build a moat around their, their interpretation of Scripture. And in essence, to say to the reader or to the student, you really don't need to come to grips with the sciences. After all, scientists are dishonest people. They make up all kinds of things in order to uh, find support for evolution. Furthermore, astronomy and geology aren't really sciences anyway. And if they were sciences, it wouldn't make any difference because the universe has fallen, the creation has fallen, therefore you can't really have accurate knowledge of the world, and human beings are fallen, there's no way for us to actually know anything about the world, so just take our interpretation of Scripture and be satisfied with it. Well, at the risk of going way out on a limb, may I suggest that this is perhaps an example of what we were talking about just a moment ago, the suppression of uncomfortable facts? I think it's completely unconscious on their part, but it does seem to me that what they are trying to do is discredit science before the student or the reader looks at it. I think so all the more because in the many years that I used to visit the excellent bookstore at the seminary where both Dr. MacArthur and, and Dr. Mayhew teach, I don't remember ever seeing in that bookstore a single book written from an old earth perspective or a single book explaining why it is that scientists think the universe is old. There are lots of books there defending the traditional interpretation of Genesis, and there are young earth creation science books in that bookstore. I never saw anything that would explain the other side of the argument. So it seems to me that what's going on here is that, consciously or not, they're trying to say to us, you really don't need to know anything about the sciences. Well, if you're satisfied with that, then God bless you. And probably I've taught you all that I can teach you at this point. But if you're not satisfied with that, and I sure don't think that you ought to be satisfied with that. I mean, this is God's world for heaven's sake. We should not expect conflict between nature and scripture. And if you think that way and you agree with me, then I hope you continue with me. Come back next time. Let's see if we can learn a little bit of geology. Thanks very much for watching. Mm -hmm.